Welcome to this screencast on practicing partial derivatives. In this screencast I'm going to consider three examples and we're just going to practice taking partial derivatives. The first one I'll work through, work through rather uh, slowly to make sure everybody's clear about the notions of partial derivatives and then I'll speed up for the second two examples. Here we're given a function of two variables x and y and we want to compute partial derivatives so we want to compute df dx and I'll say for the moment at a point a b so how do we do that? We form a function, conceptually anyway, and for now I'll actually explicitly do it, g of x, which is f, in which x is left as a variable, but y is replaced with a value, fixed value b, a general fixed value, and we write this out explicitly in this case. And then this partial derivative, I won't indicate its argument, is given by the usual or ordinary derivative of g, which will then be 4x cubed, b is just a constant, plus 16x, again b is just a constant. And so we have df dx if we want at a, b, we can now substitute a for x, and hopefully that's correct. So there we go. Now let's do the other derivative. We want df dy, again at a general point a, b. So what we're going to do now is form a function only of y, and that's obtained by taking f and setting x equal to constant value, a, leaving y to be variable, and that will be a to the fourth y cubed plus 8a squared y. We can now take the partial derivative with respect to y, it's just the derivative of h with respect to y, and a being a constant, that's 3 a to the fourth y squared plus 8 and a are a constant, so it's just 8a squared. So if we want df dy at a, b is 3a to the fourth b squared plus 8a squared. This is true for, uh, we've now evaluated it at a and b, but there's nothing particular about these values of a and b. So they're, they're arbitrary. So in fact, we can take these a and b and just now call them, replace it back and call them x, y. So any to indicate that they're variables, and in which case we have these partial derivatives, df, dx. I'm simply going to back substitute. I'm just going to call this now x, y is, and this partial derivative. Again, I'm just going to replace a and b with x and y. So conceptually, what we've done now is up at this level, we've we've had x and y in here. Here we replaced uh, y with b, and here we replaced x with a in order to do the calculations. Then we got down here, we substituted in x for a. Well, really, kind of at this level, x we set x for a there, so that we got well, you can see. And here we put y for b, and then at the end we just after we got a result, we took a b and we've replaced back x, y. To be clear about what's going on, we make this substitution. We explicitly set y equal to a constant, or explicitly set x equal to a constant. So it's clear we're differentiating only with respect to one variable. In this case, we're differentiating only with respect to x. In this case, we're differentiating only with respect to y, treating the other variable as constant. Uh, in the future, you won't go through all this substitution. You'll realize what you did was you made these substitutions here and then you substituted back. You didn't need to make all those substitutions. And let's just, well now we'll practice up. What you want to do is learn how to do this quickly. So we're just going to not make the substitutions, just mentally we're going to, going to compute df dx at an arbitrary point x, y. And we're just going to differentiate this. Everywhere we see an x, that's a variable, so that's 4x cubed y is a constant, so just leave it alone. You don't have to call it b and then replace uh, y with b and then replace it again. Just just treat it as a constant. And now x is a variable, so that's 16x. y is just a constant, so it stays the same. And over here, df dy at xy is equal to x is a constant, so that's going to be x to the fourth. I'm not going to substitute a. I'm just going to think of a, a, x as a constant. And I have y squared and a 3 plus uh, 8x squared. All right, so those are the answers. It's the same answers as on the previous sheet. Uh, I just uh, mentally uh, only treat x as a variable when I'm differentiating, when I'm doing this direct derivative, and treat 
uh, only y is a variable when I'm doing this derivative. Let's do another example. And again, you want to learn to do this quickly. So df dx. Oh yeah, I should say, I chose this example. I decided the variables aren't always called uh, x and y. It might be something else. And here I just labeled the second variable t rather than y. But okay, so here we go. df dx. I won't indicate this argument. So x is a variable. So that's so we have x to the one half. So that's simply one half x to the minus one half. T is a constant. df dt, the second argument. Well, x is a constant, so we don't worry about it, whether it's square root or not. It's just a constant. This is just a constant times the derivative of t, which is just 1. And there we go. And you should be able to differentiate this quickly. Let's do another example. So here we have f of p and q is p to the q. So don't get confused by things like this. So we df dp. So p is a variable. q is just a constant. So if I had, let's go on the side here. If I had, everybody knows this, dx to the, you're used to calling it n, but it doesn't have to be n, anything up there. dx, well you know it's n, x to the n minus 1. It's just the same thing, so it's q, p to the q minus 1. And then df, dq, okay, remember, I hope everybody remembers, if you differentiate a to the x with respect to x, that's equal to a to the x log a. If you don't remember that, I'll let you go remind yourself. p here is a constant. It's like a. Probably should have called it b, but anyway, it's a, it's a constant. So it's just um, p to the q log p. So assuming you know how to differentiate, assuming you know how to you know remember this kind of formula, and certainly remember this kind of formula, you can do partial derivatives. So I'll end the screencast and then I'll do one more on partial derivatives where I'll do slightly more complex examples just to make sure everybody's, uh, everybody's with it.